Well, why don't we start with one of the toughest of all questions to Richard Crenna about Rambo 3. Do you let him win this time? Oh, sure. I promised him last time he could win. <laughs> if you remember, I said, he asked me, this time do we get to win? I said, this time it's up to you, you know. But this time, yeah, we, we, uh, we, we defeat the entire Soviet army. Indeed. The two of us. Now, I know this... With some help. <laughs> <laughs> I know this has probably come up a lot of times, but I do have to ask, were a lot of you looking at the headlines daily to see how soon Gorbachev may or may not pull all of the troops out of Afghanistan. Oh, sure. Sure, there was always that concern, but, but it didn't really concern us in terms of the audience response to the film because, you know, it, it's the same as making a film about the Civil War or about Vietnam or about World War II. I think there's a certain uh, segment of the population say, well, that's old hat, but I think that's very small. I think most of the people, even if they had no interest in the Afghanistan conflict, they would still want to see the picture for Rambo. Secondly, they would, they would maybe go want to see the picture to see what went down in Afghanistan. What was this all about? Why, were the, so why was the Soviet Union there? What, what went on in, in Afghanistan? And, and why were they leaving? You know, and and uh, while it, we're not a political film, we're an entertainment film, mm -hmm. certainly some of those questions are addressed in the film. Fascinating sequence, too, you have with Rambo, where you remind him, we didn't create the machine that you are. Yeah. You were it, and we just uncovered it, like That's the right. creature yeah. out we, of the we, stone. We just peeled it away, and you were always a warrior inside. Anything about the genesis of that piece of dialogue that you could recall, or was it always in the script, unchanging? That was always in the script. That was something uh, that Sly wrote concerning his own, his character, that, that he he wanted to explain the evolution of this of this man, and to explain that... I think it, in, in a sense, says that it, it says it in, in a lot of ways about all of us. I think all of us are a lot of things. Some of us uh, have the opportunity to have had that outer shell peeled away, and there are others of us, probably very talented painters, very talented writers, very talented musicians, who've never had that shell cracked away mm -hmm. to allow them to emerge in in the way that they were intended to to have uh, to have lived their lives. You know, and that's unfortunate. So I think he addresses that in, that in a very kind of simplistic way, that explanation yeah. of the sculptor. And as we talked earlier about your character, in so many made-for-television films and on this big screen, you've played both heroes and villains. Troutman, I suppose, we must see as both a hero and a villain in some way. Yeah, ways. I think so. I, I think that I prefer to think of him as a hero. He's a man who is, uh, who is obligated to, do, to, to, to devote his life to the defense of his country. I think he feels himself... A, uh, I think he feels himself a good man, a man who is uh, who's defending, uh, if you will, um, democracy in the world. And uh, as such, there are people who will say, well, that attitude is really militaristic and so on and so forth. So you always get criticism. Anytime you put on a uniform, you're going to be criticized. Yeah, I remember. By somebody. I was, I was there. I remember. Yeah. Can you take us back to a time when this whole character first came up but it was still just a glimmer in somebody's eye, and you were considering the role. Share with us your decision to take it on originally. Well, interestingly enough, the role was originally played by another actor. He had not started filming, but he was cast in the role of, of Troutman. I got a call from my agent on a Sunday night and said, there's a script on the way to your house. I want you to read it and get back to me. I said, fine, I'll call you tomorrow. He says, not tomorrow. I want you to call me tonight. I said, it's 8 o'clock. I mean, the script, when is it going to be here? I'm, he says, whenever you finish it, call me. I called him. I, f I called about 1 o'clock in the morning, and I had read First Blood, and I said, it's a terrific script. It's great. I mean, we have, you know, it's about wonderful. Well, tell me. He says, well, it's good news and bad news. Number one, they want you to play Colonel Troutman, and the bad news is they want you to start tomorrow. <laughs> and I said, wow. wait a minute. What happened? <laughs> what, what, tell me what. He says, never mind what happened. Do you want to? I said, so of course I want to play this role. It's Are you a, going to tell us who the role. actor was? Well, it was Kirk Douglas. Really? And for whatever reason, I don't know. There were, you know, in quotes, artistic differences. It's never been any of my business, and I've never even asked mm -hmm. why. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, to my good fortune, I was, uh, I was the one who was selected to come in and, and uh, put on the Green Beret. Richard, and, I'm uh, going to go out like Johnny Carson. Right. How hot was it? <laughs> it was about 120 to 130 degrees in the sun, in the desert. It was very hot. The it standard by which all heat to come in your life will be measured. Exactly. Even these lights From pale. now on, oh, this, is, this is nothing compared to that, that heat was, was, it was intense. Thank you for the good, bad man. Thank the you. The bad, good man. 
Thank you very much. Now, but of course, we're talking about Rambo 3 with Richard Crenna. And for KCTV in New York City, I'm John Tibbetts.